of the most important stations of the heart, if the heart wants to achieve spiritual purification, is the station of sabr, the concept of being patient. In fact, this concept is one of the most common motifs of the Quran. In more than 100 verses, I repeat, more than 100 verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us, commands us. In fact, in more than a dozen verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically addresses our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tells him to be patient. That is how high this level is. Even our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is directly commanded in the singular by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be patient. And of the earliest <clears throat> revelations deals with patience. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wali rabbika fasbir. This is the second revelation. And Allah says, Wali rabbika fasbir. Be patient for your Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wasbir wa ma sabruka illa billah. Be patient and your sabr will only come from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu sabiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. O you who believe, be patient and advise one another to be patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal asri inna al insana la fi khusr. Advising one another to have sabr. And as I said, more than 100 verses. And as for the hadith, how many are there? I'll simply suffice with one authentic hadith reported in the Sunan of Abu Dawood. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No servant of Allah has been given a characteristic more beneficial for him than sabr. No servant has been given a khusla, a characteristic that is more beneficial than sabr. This is the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you. Now what is sabr? The famous tabi'i Sa'id ibn Jubayr, he said, listen to this definition of sabr. It's a very profound psychological definition of sabr. He said, sabr is to acknowledge all that is happening is from Allah, number one. And number two, to then expect Allah's reward in response to what is happening. What a beautiful way to define sabr. Sabr is to acknowledge all that is happening. It is from the divine plan of Allah. Then internally, you have to have that bravery. You have to have that fortitude that I'm going to bear through this in order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards me. This is a beautiful definition of sabr that will help us cope with what we have around us. Now, if you look at when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to have patience in the Quran, again, there's more than a dozen specific scenarios, but to give you some examples, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to have patience when we lose family, when we lose a loved one, when we lose our wealth. You're going to be tested. Lives are going to be lost. Your loved ones are going to be gone. Your wealth, your family, your agriculture is going to be affected. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands sabr when calamities befall us. Wasbir ala ma asabak. Be patient at all that has happened to you. And Allah commands sabr during times of drought, during times of, of general calamity of society. Allah says, Wasabirina fil ba'sa'i wa darra'i wa hina al ba's. Those who show sabr when there's famine, when there's drought, when there's a general calamity, and when the armies meet together, civil war, sabr is required over here. Also, the Quran commands us to have sabr in response to how people treat us. If somebody says something nasty, somebody sarcastic, and that's what our Prophet ﷺ said, the believer who yasbir ala adahum, he is patient at the harm, the hardship, the chitter chatter, the, the, the negatives that people say. You know, people put you down, people say things. If you have sabr at that adha, at that nuisance, he called it, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. And by the way, one of the notions or one of the uh, reasons why Allah tells us to be patient. This is good news for us parents. Allah says for parents to be patient when they raise their children. SubhanAllah. Much needed, especially those that have teenage children, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Command your children to pray and be extra patient. Don't give up. Wallah, it's so hard, right? Waking them up every morning for Fajr, for Suhoor. We just give up after all. Allah says, no. 
وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا That's our job as parents, to be patient when we give tarbiyah to our children. Allah says, وَاسْطَبِرْ which is a stronger verb than sabr. وَاسْطَبِرْ Be extra patient when you do so. Now our scholars mention, sabr can be manifested in three primary areas. Sabr is manifested in three primary areas. Number one, sabr in response to a calamity or a tragedy. And this sabr is done by acknowledging, as Sayyid ibn Jubayr says, that what is happening is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and by responding to it with dignity, by not wailing, screaming, by not rejecting, why is this happening to me? It is not fair, no. That is against sabr. Sabr is to control the tongue, and to control your thoughts and to control your body in the face of calamity. When you hear some news, when you hear something bad, you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And you don't say things that are against Iman, against Tawheed, against the Kalima. It's not fair. Why is this happening? I don't deserve this. No, we make sure we don't go to that. That is against sabr. This is the sabr in response to a calamity. Number two, sabr in withholding yourself from temptations that you want to do. We all have temptations. We want to do haram. Sabr should come us and stop us from doing haram. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam and his sabr when he was tempted. Sabr against doing drugs. Sabr against alcohol. Sabr against haram and filth and fahisha. This is the second category of sabr. You withhold yourself from doing the haram. And the third category of sabr is to always renew your intention to be enthusiastic when you worship Allah. Patience in, per, in, in, in uh, con continuing the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship becomes a routine. Salah becomes monotonous. Sabr comes in and you keep on making sure you are praying properly. You're praying on time. You're doing your rituals. Ramadan is a routine, but sabr comes in and you do it with enthusiasm. These are the three areas where sabr is manifested. Number one, in response to a calamity. Number two, in withholding yourself from a sin. And number three, in pushing yourself forward to do good deeds. Sabr has many blessings and benefits. Of the blessings of sabr, inna allaha ma'as sabirin. Allah is with those that are patient. When you are patient, Allah Azza wa Jal is with you, which means He shall help you, which means whatever you're battling will be easier to battle. Some of us are battling issues, depression, hunger, poverty. When you're with Allah, when you have sabr, Allah will help you. Number two, Inna Allah yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those who have sabr. So Allah will love you when you are patient. Number three, Inna ma yuwaffa sabirun ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. Allah shall reward you without even counting. Your ajr, when you have patience, is beyond counting. Number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the people who are entering Jannatul Firdaus, the angels will come to them and say, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. You shall enter Firdaus because you were patient. The highest levels of Jannah are given to the people of Sabr. Number five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waj'alnahum a'immatan. We made the Bani Israel leaders role models lamma sabaru when they had sabr when you have sabr allah raises your ranks and you shall become role models for people ibn al-qayyim says no one becomes a leader except after being tested with sabr and passing the test of sabr anyone who is going to be by leader we don't mean political leader we mean role model leader a leader of piety a leader of taqwa to be a role model leader you have to undergo sabr and when you undergo sabr that is when your ranks are raised up final point how does one attain sabr how does one become sabr again many things to be said number one learn the blessings of sabr and the verses of sabr and the ahadith about sabr, it will give you an incentive to be amongst the patient. Read the books that I recommended and Riyadhul Salihin, the chapter of sabr. Read these basic books so that you learn what are the blessings of sabr. What does Allah say about sabr? This will give you incentive. Number two, Studying the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu will give you a massive boost of sabr. When you see what he underwent, 
then we have no problem compared to his. When you see the sabr all of the prophets had and all of the sahaba had, life becomes easier for you. So reading histories of the past, the seerah, the biographies of the sahaba, that's number two. Number three, how to attain sabr. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you amongst the sabineen. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final point, and perhaps the most amazing point, and this should be a point that should really cause us to reflect and think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to give us sabr simply if we want to obtain it. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَنْ يَصْطَبِرُ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهُ Whoever desires sabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him sabr. وَمَنْ يُصَبِّرُ وَمَنْ يُصَبِّرُ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهُ Sorry. Whoever desires sabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall grant him sabr. What does this hadith mean? The hadith means when you are struggling with an issue and you're saying to yourself, I don't have patience, I can't deal with it. The Prophet said, change your attitude. Desire to be patient. Want to have sabr. And Allah will throw sabr upon you. Imagine if the hadith said, whoever desires to have money, Allah will give him money. Imagine if the hadith said that. What would we do? We would desire, desire, desire. Sabr is more precious than money. And it's free. All you need is to want it. And Allah will give it to you. The hadith is in Bukhari. The hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. Whoever desires sabr, Allah will give him sabr. So nobody should ever say, it's too much for me, I can't do this. No. Change your attitude. Allah Azza wa Jal will give you sabr when you desire sabr. Say, oh Allah, grant me sabr and desire that sabr. And Allah will give you the sabr to overcome every single issue and calamity. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.